Hello everyone, welcome to Secured Signing. Uh, my name is Callum, I'll be your uh, host for this, uh, this webinar today. Um, and today we're going to be going over um, how to use our Bullhorn integration. Um, now, obviously, um, all of you guys are interested in our Bullhorn integration because you are Bullhorn users, uh, I would assume. Um, and the main idea behind this is we're going to be showing um, how you can use Bullhorn, uh, Secured Signing integration with Bullhorn to easily send documents for signing uh, straight from the platform itself. Now, our integration uh, does not require any um, outside usage, so you can do it all within Bullhorn easily enough. And um, it's a, just a really, really easy way of getting your documents and your forms sent out for signing um, without having to worry about chasing things up or you know making sure that your uh, your invitees have a printer. Okay, because this is a print-free solution, so there's no printing, signing, and then scanning and sending it back to you. It's all done within browser, so very easy to do. Now, um, um, obviously, my name is Callum. I guess I've already said that. I'm a customer success manager here at Secured Signing. So it's, it's my role to basically help people use the platform um, and make sure they're getting their everything that um, they need uh, from it. Um, and in the next 45 minutes, what we'll do is we will cover um, just a bit about Secured Signing, where we come from, who we are, and uh, what we do. Um, we'll go through the common uses um, of our platform as far as the different industries. Um, and also specifically with Bullhorn, um, and the benefits that you gain from that, and then we'll round things off with a demonstration of the product itself, so you can actually see uh, how it works and what's going on. So, uh, who are we? Um, so, Secured Signing, we're a cloud digital signing and online forms platform. We were launched in 2010, so we've been going for uh, probably close to 11 years now, <laughs> um, and our main focus really was about taking a process like signing, um, well, the process of signing specifically, and sort of bring it into the modern age and giving you guys a, a digital solution for it. So that way you have a way of signing your documents without having to worry about um, not just people putting a wet signature on a piece of paper, um, but actually storing those documents. Um, so it's, a, it's an all round solution for getting that done. Um, and we're a global company. We are headquarters in New Zealand, uh, in Auckland, hence why I'm working from home right now, um, as we're currently in lockdown. But um, because we're cloud-based, what this also means is that you can use us anywhere, as long as you have an internet connection and um, I guess everything else you would normally have for working, um, it's all here. So you just need to sign into our website and uh, or sign into Bullhorn and it will be available for you. So when it comes to the Bullhorn integration, um, generally speaking, uh, the uses for our platform uh, fall into uh, three main categories. We have the candidate uh, documentation, so whatever you're sending to your candidates to make sure they can um, get on board and, and, uh, and get your agreements done. So that'd be contracts, consent forms, government, and uh, payroll forms, or you know, the normal stuff. Uh, for clients, um, this would also be for terms of business, quotes, and contracts. And if you're using both, then it would be extension letters, uh, policy sign-offs, health and safety forms, um, all sorts. Uh, the main idea really, um, while obviously our signing platform fits broadly three categories of document, the Sorry, apologies, that's um, just popped up. The main idea behind it is uh, you can use our platform to sign anything. So um, if it just needs a signature and your invitee, as long as they have a name and an email address, they should be able to um, sign their documents. Um, and ultimately, they will return to you automatically. So there's, there's no real worry about all of that. Okay. So the... Um, the main benefits of this really are um, usually around about time. Um, obviously, in today's day and age, time is money. And um, being able to get your documents signed without having to chase them up constantly um, is a great benefit for your recruiters. Um, incidentally, for the, the candidates, the people receiving the documents for signing, it's a very intuitive interface. So they're able to um, just use their phone if they want to sign on their phone. They can use it from their desktop. Really, uh, any device is, is available, um, I guess, aside from a pager, maybe. <laughs> as long as it has a screen um, and, and some sort of interface, then they should be able to sign. Um, and beyond that, the, the benefit um, for your, your management overall, even the people who aren't sending things to signing digitally, uh, is compliance and visibility. So you have a standardized process that you know the people who are sending these documents are following, and also the people who are signing, and you're able to monitor this whole process easily. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, basically things doing way, people doing things in ways that you are not anticipating. Um, and moving on from there, in this demo, what we'll actually demonstrate, and I'll be able to show you how this all works, um, we'll be showing you WeSign, which is our platform for sending documents 
uh, sort of on the fly. So if you have the document already created in your computer, um, in this instance, we're going to be using an NDA as an example. Um, what you can do is you can quickly upload it into secured signing in Bullhorn, um, place your signatures where you want them and send it out for signing. Um, easy. Uh, and beyond that, we also have our form filler platform. So this is a little bit different process wise, but you know, very, very familiar. Um, the idea being that you can set up a document for use over and over again. Um, and this should all be fairly straightforward, really, once I, I get to show it to you. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about our Form Direct platform. Now, this is a platform that we use for uh, sending documents for signing that have been custom made by our team at Secured Signing for you. So if you have a particular form that has, um, usually it's uh, very, very complex or just very long, uh, and you'd rather not make it yourself, or you, you feel like you want some uh, custom logic or um, you want it to act in a very specific way, uh, we can build that for you. Um, and incidentally, what we also have in Form Direct is a number of government forms. So if you're in the UK, Australia, or New Zealand, uh, we have a number of government forms that you may find very, very useful. And you can learn more about that actually on our website. So what we'll do, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll jump into this, easy enough, um, and I'll start showing you Bullhorn. So what we have here um, is the Bullhorn interface. It should be very familiar. Um, I'm sure you've all seen it before. Um, and the idea behind the integration with Bullhorn is we want you to use it the same way you would use Bullhorn itself. So if you, um, the first thing that you need to do is uh, find the person that you want to send the document to. Now, in this case, we're going to be using our test candidate, Stu, Stu Wood. Um, and he lives in the candidate section, so we're just going to open up his record and uh, wait for Bullhorn to load a little bit. My internet isn't the fastest at home, so I, I apologize if there are any, um, any hang-ups. Here we go. And here we have Stu's record, and we're just going to open that like we normally would. And from his candidate record, we can access all of Stu's information. And this is key to the integration, because what this means is that we can uh, pull information from his record into the documents that we're sending out for signing. So if I just click Actions and scroll down, you'll find that this is where Secured Signing lives in Bullhorn. And um, yeah, getting started is as easy as that. Uh, from there, what we're going to do, um, and you can see these are the, uh, the main functions that I talked about before uh, during the slideshow. Uh, we have we sign over here, Form Filler here, and Form Direct. Um, and moving between these interfaces, you choose that as soon as you open Secured Signing for the record. So we're going to click We Sign. And from here, we're getting ready to upload our document into the system. Now, we can already access any files that are already saved in Stu's candidate record. Um, obviously, these are ones that we previously uploaded for testing purposes. And selecting them is easy as anything. You just click them. Otherwise, if we want, we can upload from PC. Now, uh, this is also fairly straightforward, just a normal file upload process. Um, just find it in your computer. Select it. In this case, we're choosing demo NDA. And uh, we can also choose a file type for that. So um, if we want, we can just make it a check, maybe. It's uh, easy enough. And uh, once I have all the files in here that I want to upload and send out, you can also do multiple at the same time and create a package. That's fairly straightforward. Um, once I, I have that selected, I just click send for signature here. All right, and here we are. And here we have the whole document. And we can look through the whole document. We can read through it easily enough. Uh, we can cycle through all the pages in the document just to make sure it's uh, the right one. We'll just read through it before we finally get this sent out. Um, and what we're going to do here, now that we're on the signing page, is we're going to add our signatures. So because WeSign is built around the idea that the document that you're sending is already completed, all you really need to do is place signatures on it. And we can select add signatures and immediately choose from any contacts that are related to that record. So you can see we have Stu as our candidate, uh, but we also have Steve, uh, who I'm currently logged in as, and who is also the owner of the record. If, say, the current login and the owner were two different people, then you would have three options here instead. So right now we're just going to add Stu. So there we go. Click and drag, and here we go. Now, if, say, on your document, you also have a bit of information in here that you want to populate from the record. So say there's a, a little bit of information about Stu. Um, that you want to just quickly place, like maybe a, a start date or whatever. If we go to add form fields, we can actually select these fields straight from Stu's record, um, and we can just chuck them in there. So I guess if we say we wanted the available date, right, uh, the date that he's available, we can just drag that, put that into the corner, and you can see it's already populated. Uh, granted, it is in the past, 2001, so we can also we can change that to the future if we want. Um, make that 2021. There we go. Um, and when we scroll down, what we can also do is we can also place Stu's um, 
we can also add an initial signature for Stu. So say I also wanted Stu to initial this document as well. That's easy enough. Uh, all I need to do is select Stu's signature again, click and drag. There we go. And, um, and then just place that in the corner there. Now, then what I can do is I can select it as an initial signature. And from there, we're going to have Stu basically placing his initials at the corner of this page. And if I want to do this for every other page, I can do that easily enough. If I select multi-page signing, and scroll down, I could choose to have it on all pages, even pages, odd pages, or specific ones. So I could choose to have this on page one and two, uh, but not page three because I've already got a signature on there. And there we go. And that's uh, that's basically that. So once you're happy with all of this, um, all you need to do is click next. And from here, we move into the invitation workflow. So where before we were preparing the document itself for signing and choosing where we want the signatures and who to do it, now we're setting up the process um, and here we can see we have the due date for the document um, fairly standard uh, the due date indicates what what date the document will be due by um, once that that date passes uh, the document will expire now this doesn't mean that we remove the document from the system and you have to start again uh, a document will remain expired for a period of seven days and it will remain in the in progress tab which i'll show you immediately after this um, and during that time, you can do whatever you want with the document. You can extend the due date. You can uh, even change the invitee's details, like email and name, uh, in case maybe you've got the wrong email. Um, and you can also send reminders. So that's how that one works. If we had multiple um, signees in this document, which um, is easy enough, um, and we want to have a specific signing order, uh, we can turn on sequential signing right here. And that's fairly straightforward. And that means that uh, in this instance, Stu is the first invitee because he's the only one. But if I had a second one, um, they would get a number two next to them. And if I wanted to change that order, I could just click and drag. So as you can see, I'm doing that. So it's all fairly straightforward. Um, and then from there, once you're happy with how this is set up, uh, you just click send. And there we go. And that's the document sent out. So 99% of the time, um, the persons, the people sending these documents out, they they won't need to do anything. The um, the document will be sent out automatically to the invitee uh, and they will receive an invitation email which I'll, I'll show you in a bit so you can see what the process looks like for them um, and because secured signing also has an automated reminder schedule you don't have to worry about chasing the documents up either um, if say they forget to sign it when they get the invitation at first we'll send the reminder automatically at three days and then another at six days um, and the schedule is configurable so if you want them to be more frequent or less frequent or you want a, a longer period of time uh, you can configure all of that in the settings now, what I'll do, um, if I click more here as well, what I can do is I can also click on the secured signing tab for this record. Now, this is different to the one in actions because this is where you see all of your in-progress documents for this particular candidate. So in this way, you can also track them as well. Now, we're going to have a few in here just from testing, so it might take a little while to load. All right, there we go. And we can see here, this is a document that I just sent. Uh, so we have the due date, March 11th. Um, and ultimately we can see who has been invited, who the owner is and what stage it's in. So currently it's in filling because I, I, I put a form field in there. Um, and if we need to change anything about the document after sending, um, say the name of the invitee or, or the email, uh, all I need to do is click the signing status button here, that load up. And then from here, I can actually choose to change the due date. I can add a completion recipients if I want to, and I can change any of Stu's details here. Um, I won't, won't do that right now, just um, because I've, I've actually sent the email to the right email address. But the key thing is that you can edit this on the fly if need be. Um, it's no problem. Okay. And uh, also this little button here is how you would send a manual reminder as well. So we'll just close that. Now what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to open my, um, my screen and I'll be able to show you what it looks like to uh, receive that invitation. So we just jump in here. We'll minimize that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the invitation that Stu has received. So there we go. And this is what that invitation looks like. So we can see here we have the uh, we have our own secured signing logo. You can actually add branding to this um, email quite easily. Um, you just need to um, do that in the settings, and you can have your own logo up here, easy enough. Um, and underneath we have. Uh, invitation message so dear Stu, you've been invited by steve smith to digitally sign demo nda this is obviously a default you can also configure this message as well and personalize it you can do that on the fly or you can create templates to just be used um, over and over easily enough now when i'm ready to sign the document 
all I need to do is click view and sign here. Um, and this will open up the uh, document access button. Okay, and uh, if I just, and then what I need to do is I need to use the passcode that I received here, which is 2037, to access that document. So I'm currently doing this as the invitee, I should say, in case I didn't make that clear before, um, not the recruiter. So 2037, so we just key that in there, click continue, and we can open the document. And there we go. And we can see that it's updated with the date that I put in there. So, you know, 2022. Um, and underneath, we can just scroll through. Now, here we have the initial signature that I placed there before. Um, placing that is as simple as just a click. If they're on their phone, they would just tap it with their finger. And from here, they can choose any number of our font options for their signature. These are mostly useful if they're not too worried about what their signature looks like. They just want to get the document signed. Um, otherwise, they can also draw one with their mouse. I'm not especially good at that, I must admit. <laughs> uh, they can upload one from their computer easily enough, um, either a full or an initial signature, if they have it saved on there as an image. And if they're on their phone, um, they can do this on desktop as well. Uh, they can use the mobile e-pad. So on desktop, it will give them a session to connect their phone, um, and they'll be able to draw their signature with their finger. And if they're opening this on their phone, it will actually default to the mobile e-pad option automatically. Um, this is probably our most well-received signing option because it allows people to draw a, a pretty reliably um, consistent looking signature just with their finger or if they have stylus, they can use that. Um, so yeah, very popular, would recommend you give it a try. I can't really demo it during this session, I'm afraid, uh, just because we're doing this all on computer. Um, but it's there and it's uh, very easy. So for now, we'll just use a font. Um, when I click sign, um, click sign again. It will place that signature there, so that you can see, there's the initial. Uh, if I click the full signature, you'll be able to see what the, the full looks like. So we can see we have Stu's name, and uh, obviously a legible name underneath and the date and time of signing. And uh, we can also click to initial here. I should have actually also said at the beginning of the webinar, if you do have any questions, do feel free to post them in the chat. Um, we'll be able to get to them uh, after the webinar is done, so we'll just email you your answers directly. Um, and uh, yeah, happy to have a conversation after that as well. So that's, uh, that's no issue. But yeah, once they've uh, completed their signing, um, it automatically takes them to the signing complete page and uh, that's it done. Uh, not really much else to worry about because from here, the uh, document automatically returns to Bullhorn. So if I jump back to um, the Bullhorn page here and uh, refresh, we'll just reload it. It'll probably take me back to the, the, the front of Bullhorn actually. There we go. So now if I return to Stu's candidate record after that's been completed, um we will find the document is in his files tab so again just need to wait for that to load if we just scroll down which you would there we go excellent now if i go to files uh we'll see there's the the demo nda that we just signed right now so you can see also the date added and from here, you can do whatever you need to. You can download, send it, um, all the stuff that you, you would normally do with, with the file in Bullhorn. Um, it's here, and it's here automatically. So you don't need to worry about pushing it in there after the fact. And um, yeah, that's essentially how you would send a, a simple document through secured signing. Um, obviously, uh, if you have more complex workflows, um, we can typically accommodate that as well. Uh, for the sake of this demo, I've shown you a very, very straightforward way of doing it, um, just in case your document just needs a signature and that's it. Um, but if you do have other requirements, like you want a effective date or um, anything else, um, we, we can work with that as well. Uh, we've been in this game for about 10 years now. So we've, we've, uh, we've added a lot of different features and, and met a lot of different requirements for different recruiters. Um, so let us know if you have anything in particular in mind. Um, yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the form filler function. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward one, really. And this is what we would use to create templates. Um, so... These kind of documents would be the ones that are, um, you send out very frequently to multiple different invitees. Um, they're repeatable. They don't change very much between people, typically forms and uh, onboarding documents. That's what you would use form filler for. So again, same process. We make our way to secured signing. Um, and instead of clicking we sign, we click form filler. So uh, not too much of a deviation in the process. Now, when I open form filler, I'm going to immediately see all of the forms and the templates I've previously made. Uh, the main reason being when you're coming in here, you're probably going to be looking for something that you've already made. But today we're just going to be creating a template um, and walking you through the process of how that's done. 
and also explaining a bit more about the different bullhorn functions that we have. So when I click create new template, again, it gives me the option to choose any of the files that are already in, um, and choose a uh, record. If I click upload from PC, we can choose uh, it the same way as we did before with the NDA. We've got them both in the same file. And uh, when we want to get around to making it, we just select that file. All right. And now we're in form filler. So very similar uh, interface to WeSign. Um, you can see we can just cycle through the document easily enough. Um, I might zoom in a little bit because I'm doing this on a, a, a smaller um, <laughs> laptop screen. So it's a, it's a little bit small. But you can see here we have the whole document here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a signature. We're going to add a candidate signature. And um, let's zoom back. There we go. Okay. And we can see here we have the whole document here. So what I would do is just click and drag, drag that down to where we want the signature, and uh, we'll move that there. There we go. Now, one of the key functions within the, the Bullhorn integration is actually our form field. So what we allow you to do, um, as I explained before, is pull information from the Bullhorn record so it can populate your documents. Now, because we're creating a reusable template, what we can do is we can create a form that will do that repeatedly and reliably every single time it gets sent out. And the way this is done is using the form field button here and selecting your bullhorn fields for candidate. Um, you can do this for a number of different record types because we support sending documents from uh, many others. Um, now, if I scroll down, uh, as an example, what we'll do is we'll use the uh, record's uh, full name. So there we go. So here we have name. We can drag that. We can just resize it. Um, and we can populate this whole form with uh, all of these uh, different form fields. So if I click candidate again, we can um, add some other things. And uh, how you would build this form is essentially how I'm doing it right now. You would just choose your, your record type and then you would identify the field that you want to put in there. So for example, we can also add his email address here um, and we can line them up quite nicely as well using the formatting tools. But yeah, and I guess we could also place the available date as well. So we could, um, I guess we'll, we'll pop that here as well. Or maybe in date of birth, that's a, <laughs> just as an example, but yeah. Now, if we want to make this look a little bit more um, consistent with our original document, we can also use the formatting tools. So if I click select all, um, that selects all the fields that I've just created, and then I can easily choose a different font. So we could do Sego UI, and we could also make that size 12. And there you go. And uh, with that, I've basically started creating um, a fairly nice looking form. Uh, and I've done this all by myself. Um, and that's the power that you can have uh, with this integration. So complete control and the ability to make any, any forms or templates that you need, uh, that's what this allows. Now, beyond the, that themselves, as far as just making the form, there's something else to talk about, and that is the bullhorn field options. So one of the things is because we're using fields uh, that are already in your bullhorn records um, and they're being pushed through, uh, we can also control how the behavior behaves in that field. Um, so for example, if I just turn all these off, you can see we have these bullhorn field options and these tell the field uh, what you want it to do whenever this gets sent out. So for example, with the show bullhorn field, uh, show bullhorn value that is um, ticked, what that means is that it will automatically pull information from bullhorn into this field when you send it out. So in this case, it will populate the student's name before it goes out there um, and it will be there when the invitee receives it. If we click update bullhorn value, what this lets you do is um, allow any changes that are made to that field by the invitee or, or yourself um, to push back into Bullhorn when the form returns. So if say you find out that, um, I guess for example, with the email one or um, even the date available, if we wanted, uh, if they wanted to change their available date, they could. Um, and on return to Bullhorn, that change would then push back into the associated field. Um, and this means that what you can do is uh, use this for all of your data collection. Uh, you don't really need to worry about uh, manually putting in this information once you receive the form. Uh, it will just do it all for you on return. Um, so yeah, you can completely automate your, your data input and save your recruiters a lot of time if that's something that they spend a lot of time doing. Um, and then below that, we also have other controls as far as who we want to fill this in. So for example, if we want the invitee to have to fill this in, um, then they can. Um, this is especially useful um, for fields that you need to have information for. Uh, incidentally, if the field is already populated with information from Bullhorn, it won't force them to fill it in again. Um, they'll be able to look at it and tell whether or not that is correct. Um, and if it's not, they'll be able to edit it. 
um, and then that, that, that change will push through. So it's a, a really useful way of keeping your records updated. Now, conversely, if, say, you don't want the MIT to be able to change this field, you can choose read only. And this means that uh, when the MIT receives that, that, that document, that particular field will be static. It won't be able to, they won't be able to change it. And as a result, they won't be able to change the value in the Bullhorn um, record, which is um, quite useful if you have particular field values like, a, like pay rate or, um, or awards or, or anything else like that. You would much rather state that. And if they do have an issue with it, then they can contact you directly and discuss it. Um, that's the whole point behind that setting. And uh, finally, the last setting to talk about is required to fill in by sender. You can use this in conjunction with read only. Um, and what that means is anytime uh, a recruiter or um, a user sends a this particular document out for signing, they're going to have to look at that field and make sure they're happy with the content in there. Um, if it's empty, they will also have to fill something in there to make sure that it's not going out empty because it may be a vital field before you send this document out. Um, and that's what that controls for. So yeah, uh, once that's all done, um, all you need to do um, if you're happy with how the, the document looks, obviously this isn't really quite finished, but uh, for the sake of the demo, we'll just move this along. Um, once you're happy with how your, your form is set up, just click Save as Template. And then from there, you get a number of other settings. Now, this wasn't included in the WeSign function because this is specific to templates. And these settings will control how this template behaves every time you send it out. And these are for uh, workflow settings uh, with secured signing specifically. So obviously, you can choose the name of the template. Um, how it appears in the template list um, for you or any users you've shared this template with. Um, and you can also choose the name of the signed document. So when you send the template out, it's going to have the candidate's name automatically at the beginning of the file. And this is mostly useful for, for you guys um, in terms of record keeping. If, say, at some point you end up exporting all of your files out of Bullhorn and these employee details are going to be included in there, um, if they're all called employee details, that's probably going to be a, a bit of a logistical nightmare. So if we include the candidate's name at the beginning of the file name, then it means you can easily see who these uh, these forms are for and uh, just look at the at a glance and, and, and work out what to do with them. Um, and then further on from that, we have other workflow settings. So we have the email template. This uh, just controls what greeting they receive um, or rather what emails they receive from us on your behalf uh, when they are invited to sign. So this is how you would configure and control um, the invitation that they would receive, as well as the uh, completion email that they get when the whole process is done. Uh, because any time an invitee completes a process in secured signing, they also auto re automatically receive a copy of that signed document uh, in their email. Um, now then from there, what we also have is the attachments from the document library. This is useful if you want to attach any um, supporting documentation to the form. Um, such as maybe a health and safety pamphlet, something that they wouldn't need to sign, but you do want them to have and be able to read. Um, and with that, it will just be an attachment to the invitation. They can click it, download it, and do it if they want with it. Um, ultimately, it's just an easy way of getting that done. And uh, finally, we have additional completion recipients. Now, this particular function, and this is available in WeSign as well, um, is very useful if you have a particular department or a person at your organization that wants to receive every signed copy of a particular document. So if they, for example, um, a classic use for this is uh, if, say, you need your payroll team to receive all of your contracts, um, but you don't want them to have to sign everything, um, then that's an easy way of doing it. Basically, just CCs them into the end of the process so they also get that completion email. Um, and it's also important to say that additional completion recipients don't need to be users in secured signing. Uh, they can actually just be um, anybody with a name and email address, much like an invitee, um, and they, they don't cost anything extra to use. So that's um, available to you and it's very easy to just click to turn it on and click view and manage and you can add them in. So yeah, easy as that. And once you're happy with all of that, you just click save. And yeah, so I'm just gonna have a drink of water while this is going through. Okay. So now that we've done that template, um, you probably want to see where it lives afterwards because you may need to send it immediately afterwards. If we click back, we go to the, uh, the template menu, and here we can see all of the templates we made, including the new employee details form that we made just now. So you can see there's the last change is uh, today, according to our time. Um, and yeah, that's how you would create it. And when it comes to sending, um, it's as easy as just ticking and clicking send up here.
um, because the template has already been made entirely and set up and you know how you want it to behave. Um, yep, sending it is just a, a case of sending and of selecting it, clicking send, and you'll be able to configure the invitation workflow. Um, we'll just let that load. <laughs> Let's see. So there we go. And uh, there you have everything you need and sending it is just uh, clicking this button here. So yeah. Um, Excellent. So now we'll just briefly talk about uh, Form Direct. Now, Form Direct is a um, is another platform of ours. You probably saw it in the options here. So if I go back into Secured Signing from Stu's Candidate Record, we can see it. Form Direct is our tailor-made form service. So the idea behind this is that if you have any particular forms that you want made, that um that uh, you don't want to have to make yourself a form filler or you feel it's a bit too complex for that kind of interface and you want to have more advanced logic, um, this is a service that we offer. So we would simply um, consult with you, learn more about your form, and then we can create the entire thing uh, custom to your needs um, and ultimately to your own specifications. And at the end of it, you'll be able to access it straight from here. Um, obviously, the Form Direct service is um, it's, it's more of a project service. so. Uh, payment for that does depend on the complexity and the size of the form. Uh, but once you have the form, um, it actually it, it's counted the same each time you use it as any of our regular documents. So the pricing is the same as if you were using form filler. Um, and yeah, and once you have it, it's yours. You you can uh, use it as many times as you want, and that's uh, that's how it works. Um, but yeah, um, incidentally, for Form Direct, we also have a few government forms as well. So obviously, uh, this account is configured for Australia, so we have the TFN and Superfund Choice form. Um, if you're in New Zealand, uh, we actually have the uh, the IR330, which is, um, um, I guess, sort of our version of the TFN, really, if, uh, if you're wondering what that is, um, as well as KiwiSaver and uh, the Ministry of Justice background check forms. Um, so, yeah, a uh, whole bunch of options for this. Even if you're not interested in, in having a form made for us, um, for you by Form Direct, uh, you'll find these government forms are very, very easy to use. And they're designed to be um, as simple and effective and smart as possible. Um, because our developers have made them all in HTML5, which does mean they look a little bit different to what you'll make in Form Filler, um, but that's because they've, they've been made by um, the professionals. So, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I think that wraps up the webinar. Um, do feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. Anybody that's posted any questions in the chat will we'll respond to you afterwards via email directly just to um, answer any of your queries. Um, otherwise, I, I should say if we, we get out of here, if you do have any further questions, we can um, you can refer to our uh, integration page here for Bullhorn um, at you know www.securedsigning.com slash product slash integration slash Bullhorn, um, or you can just give us a call. Uh, we're always happy to talk with you. We're happy to learn about how we can help you and what you're specifically looking for. Um, so excellent. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you have a good day, and uh, I look forward to speaking with you.